So Critical Role has been on fire lately with their episodes of Critical Role Campaign 3. And last night's episode, Campaign 3, Episode 75, was no exception. Spoiler warning. In this video, we're going to be breaking down and discussing everything that happened in C3, Episode 75, where we saw a wild Ludinus Delath appear and what all of this means for the future of our story. We got a lot to talk about, so let's just jump right into it. So when we last left off, our party had just been sent to a frigid mountain volcano to claim the Shard of Raushan. Raushan being one of the mighty primordial elemental beings who shaped the world of Exandria and was destroyed in the beginning of the Calamity in the events of EXU Calamity. As well, in the last episode, we learned that Ashton bears a shard of one of the other primordials, Camort, and that Ashton and these shards will be very important most likely for defeating Ludinus, potentially for defeating and stopping Perdothos. The episode begins as our party venture deep into this uh, mountainous volcano, Matt doing a, a really good job of uh, explaining and giving off the feeling, the vibe of a nightmare cave exploration. A few months back, I went down like a weird rabbit hole of like when like cave spelunking goes wrong and stories of like people stuck in cave systems, it's absolutely horrifying and you will never catch me ever doing that. I feel like Matt as a DM has really upped his kind of like horror game vibe. He's always been like good at horror, don't get me wrong, but I feel like since the release of Candela and just like overall horror vibes of Campaign 3, he's gotten like way, way better at it. And these scenes of this cave diving are a really good example of it, especially if you're a DM and you're trying to learn how to create like an atmosphere of just sheer panic and uh, terrifyingness. Eventually all of our party emerge into an opening deep within this volcano where they find a lava pool deep within it, the uh, the shard of the primordial lies. Ashton dives into that bitch swimming down trying to get the shard. Fern jumps in after. It was immediately at this moment where I was like, oh, wait, Fern's probably going to be the second vessel for the shard because as well in last episode, we learned that the tree informed us, the ancient druid tree, that Ashton most likely shouldn't bear both of these shards of these primordials as it would probably kill them. And in hindsight, it does seem rather obvious that it was Fern. A lot of people did speculate it would be Fern. I mean, Fern literally is a, a, a fire druid. After going for a quick dip in the lava and taking a bunch of fire damage, they emerge holding the shard, the shard of this ancient primordial. Matt describes it as this like bright orange white crystal where a light shifts inside of it that almost looks like a window to an inferno. It's here that they finally realize that they can use Ludinus's harness to transfer the power of this shard potentially into Ashton or into um, Fern, most likely. Remember, they left this harness with Imahara Joe, and they were discussing going to Whitestone and getting Percy's help, which is most likely what's going to happen in the next episode. However, before they can do anything, a wild Ludinus Delath appears. Along with several Ruby Vanguard, as well as several crazy, scary, Rhyloran, uh, moon, spirit creature things. Here we get like a super epic lava side combat. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is epic as fuck. I gotta give props to everyone, uh, our party here in this combat. The cats get a lot of uh, grief for playing D&D as long as they had and not being like amazing in combat. But I think that's not fair. I think that they're really good and they have really good teamwork all together and they understand the rules really well. And obviously they've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 because there was a lot of, uh, a lot of lava plays going on by our party here. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Imogen telekinesis some guy into lava, Orem pushes a guy into lava and just absolutely pumps an ass ton of damage. It's always fun watching Liam play these types of characters where he gets to pump damage and do a ton of these things because you can tell he just gets super into it. It seemed like Ludinus originally was going to speak and talk with the party and it wasn't going to be a combat, but that went to shit really quickly. But luckily for uh, our party, they made really good plays here and they eventually basically killed all of Ludinus's allies pretty fast and then Ludinus himself was in a pretty tough situation. It seemed like the tables were about to turn when Ludinus was going to cast a ninth level spell, but then there was a really clutch counter spell um, by, by Laudna, by Marisha, and then a fail counter spell 
by lewdness. It was at this point that I was thinking that, wow, there's like a, a lot of real worlds where they could actually kill lewdness here. So part of me was like, there's no way that this is the real lewdness because imagine if Orem would have gotten him into the lava that they could have easily killed him. But of course, Matt's thinking well far ahead in advance, and he was planning for that, as we learn that this lewdness is in fact a clone, as the lewdness freely drops itself into the lava. It might not have actually been like a clone, like the clone spell, but it seemed to behave in some sort of manner like that. This was a really intense combat, and I gotta give a lot of credit to the cast. They played it really, really well. They did a really good job, even though there was a couple of minor mess ups. They did a really, really good job, and they also got some really good dice rolls and they played around the lava and it, it things went really well for them. This was potentially a very challenging combat. Obviously, Ludinus himself is there in some sort of fashion. So the fact that they managed to come out relatively pretty unscathed is impressive. From here, our party decided they're going to gather Joe and travel to Whitestone to fix uh, Ludinus's harness so they can harness the power of this shard as they seem to finally realize or it seems to finally be setting in that they are very much on a time crunch and personally i think this is good ever since the big apogee solstice episode it's been kind of weird like as far as like the level of urgency in our story it feels like the level of urgency should have been really high but a lot of the way that things have been playing out it doesn't actually come off that way as the urgency is high. So personally, I'm glad that it feels like they're getting put on a bit more of like a time crunch and that urgency is going to uh, arise again. I'm very curious to learn in the future, like what our baddies, what lewdness uh, and uh, Imogen's mother have been up to during these last like few days, these last episodes uh, in between the Apogee Solstice and now, because I'm very curious as to like what exactly is the reason that Prodothos hasn't been released upon the world of Exandria. Like what is going on in the baddies world right now it seems like roughly things are going good for them but it's obviously not going to plan but we don't really have that information right now and we're probably gonna have to wait until like a long time in the future to eventually find that out but i'll be really glad when we do find that out because i feel like it'll make this whole timeline and just like the feeling around it just feel a lot better does that make sense overall these last few episodes of campaign three have been a lot of fun it's been really cool seeing the lore all coalesce together all this exu calamity lore just like really deep lore uh, and which is like my probably favorite thing about critical role i love the universe i love the deep lore of the world uh, i find it very very good i especially love the old lore all the age of arcanum calamity uh lore stuff so it's really cool seeing all of that kind of all come together and seeing these repeated themes of like fate, destiny, the nature of like divinity, all of that really coming together um, in campaign three in this really awesome long form story format that I feel like a lot of people don't appreciate. But then again, maybe I'm just a nerd. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, learn something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to see more uh, Critical Role content, like our Critical Role lore videos, then please click one of the videos on screen now. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe out there, drink your water, love your mother. Until next time, peace, love, Audu.